Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Tuesday, March the 24th. As always, it's good to have you here. We start off with Kristen Eifert, who's with us from Central Missouri Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Good to have you Thank here. Thank you. And what a mouthful that title is. I know. Is. I wish we had an easier, <laughs> easier okay. name. So. But you, you've got to, you're here to tell us about a special event you've got coming up in April at the That's library, right. right? April 13th, we have a program for adults. And it's a class on, from 7 to 8 p.m. at the library in the friends room. And our class is Cooking with Whole Grains. Lori, cooking with Whole Grains. Cooking with Whole Grains, yes. Yeah. And this is really important because we don't get enough whole grains. We do don't. We in in fact, um, a recent study looked at um, adolescents and young adults and, and, and as to how much whole grains they got in their diet. The average person got less than one serving of whole grains each day. And we want to have at least three servings of whole grains. Um, I'm now, part w w when you buy whole wheat bread, it not not wheat bread. It has to say whole wheat right. bread, right? Right. Is one slice of whole wheat bread considered a serving? That or would be considered a serving. So if you have a sandwich, you've got on two. whole wheat bread. You got yep. you got two servings. Yep, you're right. Okay. What about oatmeal? Is, is oatmeal is whole grain as well? Yes. So. Even um, quick oats, they're just processed so that they're in a little smaller size, but they still are a whole grain. Oh, you mean those, the instant oatmeal? The instant oatmeal. And that's still considered whole it's grain? It's still considered a whole grain. Nothing has been taken out of the grain. It's just been chopped smaller. So, Is rice a whole grain? Well, it depends on what kind of rice you if get. If you eat white rice, it's not. It's not at all, no. But brown rice, in fact, there's lots of versions of brown rice. Um, Long my, grain, is that a whole grain? Uh, if it says brown long grain rice. So my favorite is brown basmati rice. It's kind of got a popcorn-y flavor. It's really delicious. And um, So for, for rice to be whole grain, it's got to be brown. It's got to be brown. The yes. white rice is no not. No matter what version it is, it's white is, is so not a whole is, grain. Is there anything wrong with it? There's, well, I mean, you know, in our recommendations to people, we would like at least half of your grains to be whole grains. So it would be fine to have some white rice. It just, um, when they when they refine it to make it white or, you know, not a whole grain anymore, they're taking parts of that grain and, and taking that away. So primarily they're taking fiber off in the, the germ. And so you're losing a lot of, you know, some of the nutrients and for sure most of the fiber. Okay. So. And it's the same thing with white flour versus whole grain flour. Right. All right. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit more about your class before okay. we run out of time. Well, this class um, will, of course, you know, with nutrition, we always have to have food. So mm -hmm. there will be some taste testing, some um, some recipes that will be demonstrated. And then just talking about, you know, how do you find whole grains in the grocery store? Because, you know, just because, again, like you said, you know, you look at a loaf of bread and it looks and it says whole, it says wheat bread. Wheat bread, right. Um, Unless it says 100% wheat bread, it's not going to be 100% whole, whole wheat. Whole wheat. Whole wheat. It, it will not be. Um, it will not be a whole grain. Right. Okay. So just it may look brown. It may look just like the other one that is 100%. But, but it's not. So look so. for whole wheat. Right. Yeah. Right. And beans are uh, a good source of. Well, they're a good source of fiber, so they, but they wouldn't be in the grain category. Okay. So. All right. Yes. So if people want to come to this class, it's. Um, it's you can just show up and come. You do not have to sign up for it. But if you want to know more information about the class, you can um, access the library's website, and that would be a great place to um, okay. to find Give out. Give them the more. date one more time. It is April thirteenth, so right before tax day on okay. Saturday. So right. actually, no, I'm sorry, that's Monday, not Saturday. So Monday, April fourteenth on Monday. Monday, April thirteenth. Thirteenth. Okay. Yes. Two days before tax day. Yes. yes. Kristen, thank you so much for coming thank by. Thank you. Okay. Now I want to introduce you to Dr. Charlene Atkins. First time on Radio Friend. Good to have you here, it's Doctor. Here. Uh, you are from Expert Vein Care, and we were going to talk today about something that 25, you were telling me, 25% of the population has, and that's varicose veins. That's right. Is varicose veins, and we, I asked you this as soon as you came in, is varicose vein, is that a life and death situation when you got varicose veins? It is not a life and death situation, but it is something that can affect people's quality of life. So what are varicose veins? Varicose veins are veins that are commonly large and ropey veins that we see bulging out of the skin. And it looks kind of blue? Can look blue, exactly, because it's venous blood, so it's deoxygenated blood. And or is that what makes the blood blue? When the, the, the color element? changes according to the oxygen level of the blood. So when the blood's running through your body, once 
the oxygen has been taken out, it's blue. Correct. But when you cut yourself, it's coming out, it hits the oxygen, and it turns red. Is that right? <laughs> well, the, it's a subtle color change. So... Um, That's not exactly right. It's then. not... The, the blood appears more red before the oxygen is taken out, but it's not like the difference between primary red and primary okay. blue. Okay. So, again, what is causing the varicose veins? Varicose veins are veins where the vein is too large and the one-way valves in the veins have failed. And for that reason, the blood, instead of moving back towards the heart, the job of veins is to carry blood back to the heart, and the blood stagnates or tends to stagnate rather than flow because the veins are too big and the valves are, are not functioning. To let it out. To let it go back up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens to that blood that's in that varicose vein? So it tends to sit there instead of going back to the heart to get recirculated and go through the lungs and pick up more oxygen and do another circuit. Does it ever leave there or it just sits there permanently? It, it still moves, but the flow is inadequate. And that's why we see the problems in people who have long-term varicose veins. Their legs tend to feel heavy. Mm -hmm. They ache, they itch, they swell, and they can have a whole host of skin issues that can develop in the lower leg due to the varicose veins. So how do you treat varicose veins? Varicose veins are in, in the modern era of vein care are treated with three primary modalities. There's endovenous thermal ablation where a small catheter is put into the vein. You start an IV and put a catheter in and you deliver thermal energy to the vein and cause it to contract and mm -hmm. ultimately scar down. Okay. Then there is a treatment modality called microphlebectomy where for veins of a small to intermediate size, they can be, uh, that you can incise the skin with a little needle and just remove the vein directly. Okay, we're about out of time. And the third one? And the third one is sclerotherapy, which okay. is injection of a sclerosant medication, which does the same thing. It okay. causes the vein to close and seal. If people want more information, what's your phone number? Our phone number is 573-447-7477. Okay. 447-7477. And that's Expert Vein Care. Thank you so Thank much you for so coming much. by, Doctor. That was interesting. Was All fun. Right. Tomorrow, uh, Global First Responders. Our program directed by Travis McMillan, Audio Pat Akers, Floor Director Brendan McDermott, and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mouser. Bye-bye.